Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Francois Jobé. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen any of my other videos, uh, the video that I'm going to, or the lesson uh, that I'm going to give you, uh, is, a, is a fairly longish uh, lesson. Um, it's almost two hours worth of a kneeling uh, expertise. Uh, I've done it in a simplistic way and I've also done it in a scientific way with uh, some science behind it to give you an idea why, what, where, you know, what can influence your uh, your internal ballistics in your chamber. Uh, be, be after every uh, lesson, uh, there's, it's broken up in seven uh, lessons. There will be a uh, description and with some highlight points that you can just go on uh, to have a look at, at that. Um, if you want to quickly squeeze back to something or forward to, to something, there will just be a time. And also, once again, on your uh, right hand side of your screen at the bottom, there will be a circle with a, a cross in a broadish uh, cross. If you uh, tick on that, uh, that will subscribe you to the, uh, all the other lessons that's coming. And if you read in the uh, description that I've given you, you will also see there's a specific hyperlink. Uh, it says Patreon uh, slash Fanatic. And then that specific uh, hyperlink will bring you through to uh, my pledge, uh, where I can uh, make a couple of rand. And also f for, from my side, to make my pledge that I will give you good quality uh, lessons and uh, things that you can use and hopefully learn from. So I hope you enjoy the uh, annealing. Uh, like I say, it's a lot, uh, but I think it might be informative for uh, everybody that has a look at it. If there's something else that you need to know about annealing, uh, maybe something that's not on there, Give me a f some feedback uh, and I'll try and do my best to give you an answer. Uh, thank you very much for your, for your help and for watching this. Uh, I appreciate it. Uh, thanks again. Three. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, for those of you that haven't um, seen any of my previous uh, lessons, my name is Francois Joubert. Um, I'm giving the uh, lessons on annealing now at the moment, uh, but this is part of the process of the of the whole reloading uh, process from A to Z. Uh, so at the moment, I'm going to explain to you uh, the annealing. I know there's many people that's got different ideas and ways, and and, and some people say, yeah, you need to be a, a guru or a, a, I don't know what else, and or a scientist or or whatever. But there's enough um, equipment on the market nowadays that can help you to anneal your bras properly and correctly. And one of the uh, part, or one of the one of the items that makes the annealing uh, very easy, uh, and it should be available in most of the gun shops. And you can, um, I got these from Amazon, so they are available. Uh, here I've got Tempilac. It's a temperature indicating liquid. And if you look uh, close on this one, it's uh, a 475 degree Fahrenheit. And that is 246 degrees Celsius. And that is the temperature that uh, most people use for the annealing. But the annealing itself of the neck part, you need a temperature of um, approximately 700 to 750 degrees. So to put this in your neck part of your uh, uh, brass, 
is not going to give you the correct uh, temperature there and you can very easily and I think that is where a lot of people are afraid of you can very easily over anneal your bras and then the tensile strength of your bras uh, becomes very uh, low and you can uh, it, it, it has no ductility or it's got too much uh, stretch in it and you can have problems uh, with that so what I've done is I'm going to also show you the um, temperature that I use at the moment uh, it's it's a 750 degree Fahrenheit and it's a, a 399 degrees Celsius so this uh, Tempilac over here this temperature range over here uh, I put in the inside of the neck and the white one as a reference I, I'll put on the outside of the of the shoulder so you don't want the shoulder part of your brass to uh, become too hot if that becomes too hot you can over anneal it and you can have problems typical problems what can happen um, I don't say it happened with this one but uh, there's a specific brand of brass and I'm going to show it to you I don't want to uh, badmouth anybody but this is good brass and I shot it with uh, other uh, cases as well and when your heat comes too far back to the uh, head this is your head part then uh, it will stretch and if it stretches here you can get serious malfunction of your rifle and I can show you what happened there so what happens with, with this is your primer goes in very easy it falls out very easy so there's no pressure there at the back so there was too much stretch and too much stretch at the back now this specific case um, caused me serious problems if you have a look on this one over here it's part of the uh, extractor and everything that sits here um, that part broke off on my rifle so if you can imagine for yourself uh, if the other part broke off as well uh, this uh, you know you, you, you can death because your rifle can explode so I think that is where people uh, are afraid of annealing so I'm, I'm going to try and show you uh, the better ways uh, and the correct ways of annealing and then we take it from there uh, the flames that you use you can use a, a, a couple of different uh, types of gas uh, I've got here a, a small uh, butane uh, cylinder it's um, uh, what this one does is when, when it when it burns I'll show you just now it, it uh, I liked this one very much and I still like it very much but it's a small canister you can maybe do about 50 or 80 uh, you know brass uh, cases and, and and then it's empty and uh, then to replace it you know it, it becomes expensive the other one that I'm also using that's also a butane uh, a gas uh, a torch that uh, I'm using for annealing and then I've got the propane uh, which is this one over here so this is all uh, locally available uh, in, in South Africa and uh, this comes from America you know so you should be able to get it over there so that shouldn't be a problem to get any one of these uh, over there so I'm just going to light all of these up and uh, then I'll show you what sort of flames you can get the other one that I'm also using is uh, this one over here and uh, I'm going to show you the bottle it's a bit of a heavy one but I can try and show you so yeah this is it so I use LP gas um, with this I will be able to anneal maybe 10,000 or 15,000 you know pieces of brass you know so this if you really go this route uh, it's uh, it's more than enough to give you a constant flame and 
your 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 annealing process will be constant and then you have a, a batch of brass or two batches of brass that's 100% uh, annealed correctly okay so most of these uh, gas canisters that you get nowadays uh, I'm going to start off here with a propane one uh, they have the automatic ignition, you know, so you, you've got your flame and I don't know if you can see exactly up to where the uh, flame goes. So the flame uh, goes right up to about here and you'll see the end of this uh, where you can see it. You know, so it doesn't look like it as if there's nothing here. But that flame is still hot enough right over there to, to heat up a piece of normal steel. Now lead is uh, one of those uh, Let me just get the end of this one here uh, This melts at about 660 degrees so if you put this right on, on the tip here, uh, you can see what will happen to it. So there, you know, so, so this, is, this is fairly hot, you know, all of these are fairly hot, uh, these flames. So people come and, and they will tell you to put your uh, piece of, of brass which you want to anneal to put it right here in the flame over here or just above the blue part over here that blue part over there uh, the temperature on that uh, we can have a look at uh, people that did some fancy photography and uh, then you'll understand why you know many of these uh, flames and, and, and so on you can over kneel your brass so if we look at this one over here, uh, you want about 700 to 650 to 700 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, which is uh, about 400 degrees uh, Celsius um, and about 200, uh, roughly about 250 degrees Celsius to, to kneel it. But the lower the temperature, so you can go and anneal your brass uh, in at, at 250 degrees Celsius. Uh, the problem is you have to stick that brass in the oven, and that is uh, how I learned. I went around and asked people, how do you anneal? You know, what do you do? Um, and the one guy came up and said, no man, you just stick it on a, 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 a flat uh, oven pan and uh, or oven tray and you put it in there for an hour which i did and uh, i threw away 100 pieces of brass because the whole piece of brass from head to the neck was annealed and then the back part is soft so you don't want to do that uh, so you what you want to do is to anneal the front neck part only now the annealing temperature of that part over there is we, we're looking at around about uh, 700 to 750 uh, degrees uh, Fahrenheit uh, for a, approximately five seconds and that's it uh, more than that then you over anneal it and then your neck becomes too ductile you know so it'll stretch too easy uh, what happens then is things like this happen uh, where if it catches something somewhere it'll just you know uh, press it in you know it'll be too soft to uh, go past a certain point in your uh, neck die or anything like that you know so this is uh, one that I can say you know it was over annealed you know it's uh, it's one of those things they say if you haven't missed a buck uh, in your life you, you haven't hunted long enough so if you don't uh, uh, anneal and you don't get a stuff up somewhere, uh, the one that's over annealed or under annealed, then you have <laughs> most probably not learning long enough. Uh, nothing, nothing, nothing bad said about that. But that is the case. You know, that's that's the learning process uh, to to get to know how to 
uh, anneal. So what we're looking at here 